Professional football in America is a special game, a unique game. Played nowhere else on earth, it is a rare game. The men who play it make it so. Come on, Tommy, answer the phone. Ten minutes away from showtime, you're not here. Chips Ahoy. Yes, pork rhymes. These ex jocks, unbelievable. <laughs> Opening day, he's not even here yet. What is he doing? As you all know out there, I am a man of the people. So what do we do this week, huh? What do we got in the can? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing? The hell do you mean nothing? Yes, I love the wave. What's wrong with the wave? It wasn't a wave, that was a tsunami. Listen, I got a pedicure in an hour. When I get back here, the wheels better be spinning, all right? All right, guys, who wants the first slice? Okay. Oh, oh excuse me, man. Uh, Tom? Corey, what's up? What, what are you doing? Don't bother chasing me, all right? Hey, Tommy, how you doing, Tommy? Oh, had enough of you guys. Yeah, yeah here they are. Yeah, this is what we're yeah, looking for. <laughs> this is a very honorable day for me. All right, guys, bring it in here. Let's get it going, all right? One, two, three. Waddles Really? Take off, all of you. Right now. Go. Don't come back till I tell you. Tom Waddle, every team wants to have a Tom Waddle. If I had a football team, I'd like to have a Tom Waddle on my team because you draw from that, uh, watching the television, seeing him take those blows. That's cobwebs, and this is how he got the cobwebs. Look, he got upended there. And one, how he caught that ball, that was some feat. Tom Waddle's a former Chicago Bear wide receiver. Waddle. An amazing, amazing athlete. I'm Tom Waddle, and for more than half of my life, I've participated in contact sports. As a wide receiver in the National Football League, I was fully aware of the physical risks that I faced on a daily basis. Five, eight, eight. Here's Harbaugh. Another first down, Bears. I also know that my life was truly enriched, learning life's lessons on the playing field and participating in a team sport. I can't help but want a guy on my team like that. He has some time. He has water. The guy's amazing. in Chicago are also hoping their team can once again dwarf the football horizon in 1991. Despite winning the NFC Central title in 1990, the Bears lost four of their last six games. And to return to glory on opening day, Chicago needed to survive a battle of the NFL's defensive giants. <laughs> The Bears kept Herschel Walker and the Vikings out of the end zone all day as the game's lone touchdown was scored by a most unlikely hero. Vikings on the rush, here's the snap. Harbaugh in a tight pocket, rainbow, deep down the right sideline. Oh, <laughs> Number 87, Tom Waddle, waved last week by the Bears and then brought back, helped give Chicago a 10-6 lead which was preserved with just over a minute remaining when number 76, Steve McMichael, rose to the occasion. And number 36, Marcus Paul, picked off his second interception of the day to kill Minnesota's final threat at the Chicago 11. Viking head coach Jerry Burns watched the Bears notch their eighth straight opening day win, while Minnesota picked up where it left off after a frustrating 1990. And in Chicago, Tom Waddle. He can't run, he's not fast, but he gets open. Amazing. This guy, we did their game against the Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs, and he caught everything that was thrown and took every hit that they could give him. 
and he had an all-time day in the use of smelling salts. He gets hit every way but loose. Watch him. He's going to come in this zone, work up, then he's going to come in here to the middle. There's the throw. He has to go up for it. He knows he's going to get hit anyway. The ball cannot, the ground cannot cause a fumble. So once he catches it, he has to come down with it in control. I guess they're saying that he had control. Harbaugh hammered just as he let the pass go to Waddle. It is a catch, and it'll be a bare first down. And that was one of the gutsiest performances by a wide receiver that I've ever seen when he played in that playoff game against the Dallas Cowboys. It seemed that every time he'd catch a ball, he'd get knocked every way but loose. But he kept coming back. Gets it out of there. It's caught by water. Ray Horton knocked him down. But a gain of 15. If the Bears don't have Waddle, they don't have anything today. I mean, he's the only offense they got. The Cowboys are using a zone here, so Waddle's just working against the zone. He's running an in pattern. You're finding that hole in there, but you'd think somewhere you'd start bumping on the line or get some guys against Waddle because they don't seem to have much else going today. I'm on a throw. Receiver. That was a hope. That was everything there. That was a heck of a throw by Harbaugh, a heck of a catch by Waddle, and good defense by Ike Holt. I watch him. It's a little sprint out here to the right. He zips that thing out. Holt is right there. Holt tries to come around with that right hand and knock it down. That's about as good a coverage as you can get. Pass is caught by Waddle. That should get enough for a bear first down stopped by Manny Hendricks. Our ball's pass is caught again by Waddle. Waddle at about the four. And he gets the touchdown. From Harbaugh. That guy's a football player. They still, they are still adding to the record. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think after the immaculate reception, I think it was 10 for Madden. <laughs> Madden never played like Waddle did, I'll tell you that. Harbaugh to throw it. As a man open, he's out of bounds. Incomplete. Waddle. Yeah, even though he's out of bounds, that was a great catch. I mean, this guy, and even Jim Harbaugh was saying last night, anything you throw to Tom Waddle, he catches. This guy has amazing hands. I mean, all the things that would jump, hands, concentration, look the ball in, all those things you have to do. Here's Harbaugh. Caught by Waddle. That guy is amazing. He's not going to show that that hurt either. Because him, and, you know, like you said earlier, he told us that he's, you know, he's too small, he's too slow, he's too all these things. But the guy just catches everything that's thrown at him. He reminds me a lot of Fred Blitnikoff. Strongly, there he is again. Another first down. Gain of 11, stopped by William White. You know, and he not only makes those on the sideline, but he makes the tough catches. And that was, he has checked the cop with that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he is he has caught two plays in a row, and he has taken two hits in a row. And that one there, he knew it was coming, and that one cleaned out the sinuses. I mean, watch as he gets hit here. Watch his head snap backward. That is a KO punch. I bet you he caught it. If he didn't catch it, I don't think he'd argue like that. The ball did hit the ground, but he did have control of it, too. This is pretty good. I mean, he really uses his hands. That's what he, hands are. Both of them working together. He's always had that running philosophy. Here's Harbaugh back to throw again. As a man open, it's Waddle. William White made a stop first down Bears. And Waddle knew exactly where that marker is. 
Watch, he comes in. He knows what he has to get to a first down. Look at that catch. He knows he's going to take the hit. He stays there and takes it and just puts the ball up there for the first down. Can you talk about Jay Cutler's toughness? Oh, I think Jay Cutler gets a hugely bad rap about his toughness. And I think if you ask players who did not actually see eye to eye with him in that locker room, and Brian Urlacher is a good example. Maybe Brian and Jay didn't see eye to eye on a lot of different things. We have Brian on our radio show weekly during the football season back in Chicago, and Brian will attest to Jay Cutler's toughness. That is one thing, Stephen A., with all due respect, that I do not agree with you on. I believe Jay Cutler has lived through some horrendous football beatings on the field. Mm -hmm. I think two years ago he came back from a torn groin in just a week. Mm -hmm. I know this is an issue that um, probably my stance isn't popular. I think he's going to start at least eight games in the National Football League next year for a team that's going to give him a chance. That's not why you looked away Chicago. and said that. That's why you looked away and said that. No, I, I, can't, not. I can't believe you're saying this, Tommy. No, and you're going, and Steven, you're going and back to on. Chicago and you're going to go on the radio and say, do you say this stuff in Chicago? You I really, do, you yes. Really, and, yes. And what do they say to you? What do they say to you when you walk the streets of Chicago? It's a very, you, Stephen A., it's a very <laughs> difficult job to try to, to defend Jay in any way, shape, okay, or form. Okay, okay. I, I admit okay. that. And I'm telling mm. you that he hasn't been the quarterback that everyone in Chicago expected him to be. I know be. that. I know you get that. But I asked you a direct question. I'm talking about the incident that we were talking about in 2010 and what you're saying oh you it's hard to gauge all of this other stuff i subscribe to the theory and life of common sense and when you violate my common sense i get angry i get that get off my lawn type of mentality i'm saying you go on the air and say that stuff yeah, absolutely and what, they, and what do they say to you tom what do they say to you what they do say, the, the, you know what they say they say tom you should know because you actually play
Leave us with this uh, Jim Harbaugh story from his playing days. You got a great one? Wow, Jim Harbaugh. Uh, I walked into the huddle, um, I want to say 1991, after being on and off the, the practice squad for two years. Opening game of the season against the Minnesota Vikings. Um, I was dressed, but only because we only had four guys active that day. And, and in fact, Ditka had told me the day or the, the week before that uh, I was going to dress for the game. And I said, Coach, I'm going to play. He said, no, you're going to be dressed, but you won't see time. Uh, somebody got hurt. So on third and eight, I think it was, I jog out to the huddle and, and Harbo looked at me and, and basically said, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm Anthony Morgan's out. I'm, I'm here. Um, so uh, third and eight, ball snapped. I run eight or 12 yards down the field, turn around, and Jim hit me between the eight and seven. And we turned a third down into a first down, and we were friends forevermore after that. <laughs> What if you had and dropped by the way, it? Dan, yeah. Dan, that was the last time Jim Harbaugh ever hit me between the numbers with a pass. <laughs> I'm not afraid to say that. I mean, there were some that were over my head. There were some that were low. That one was perfect. How intense was he? Uh, the, the greatest competitor I've ever seen. Whether we were playing golf or we were bowling or playing cards, he would just as soon as fight you as talk to you. And... <laughs> Um, but you know what? When you get in the huddle, that's the guy you want under center. I, I mean, I've, I saw him get the crap kicked out of him and just keep coming back for more. So I had the ultimate respect for him, knew if he decided to be a coach that he'd be great. His dad was a great coach. Obviously, his brother's been a great coach. And uh, I call him a friend. Uh, he's a little different than he was as a player, but still the, the drive to win is, is always there. I think before we leave this game, I think – there ought to just be one more tip of our hats to, to Tom Waddle of the Chicago Bears and one of the most gutsy performances that I've ever seen. Woo!